which I'm excited for. And speaking of automation, speaking of... I mean, of, I say that word a lot. I don't I know, know if I said that recently. What you call it? Would you even go so far to say front-end automation? What we're talking Ooh, about today. Are you talking about like a, a front-end for our automation? That indeed is what I'm talking about. So speaking of automation, speaking of front-end automation... We're jumping into our next service here, which is Rundeck. Now, I know we've done an overview of Rundeck before, but I did want to cover kind of briefly why you would use this. And then I really want to jump into projects, which are what I would describe tip of the iceberg. It's, it's, you can get so deep with Rundeck. So, uh, I'm really excited for today because there's actually just a ton of information jam packed on projects. So, I didn't want to cut anything out. I wanted to do just kind of one, uh, a little brief overview again uh, to reintroduce the topic and then jump into projects. Okay, enough talking about what I'm going to do here. Going to do it. Uh, so Rundeck, as we described before, is runbook automation. Feature point, you basically are giving anyone self-service access to operations capabilities that only your SMEs could perform. Andrew would know this, and I know this. If he asked me to go out and run the playbooks or the comp- compositional role on an instance, I would be absolutely clueless. Thankfully, what he has done is created a, fr- <laughs> a project, and in the project, we have our jobs, and I'm able to just run these jobs to spin up my instance, you know, test the code I need to test. And then, you know, if I need to change a variable, I can run compositional role on it and it'll fix it. And then I'm able to tear down the instance without having to do anything too crazy. So it really provides, in our instance here, me the ability to do something on my own rather than having to become a full-blown expert on everything we have, you know, being an expert at two things at once, essentially. I can focus on what I need to focus on. He can focus on what he does. And th- this front end provides that ability. So with Rondeck, basically what you're getting is commands, jobs, you can run on nodes. Uh, and then projects is basically this top layer. So projects are a place to separate all your activity. So first thing you do when you deploy an instance is you're going to have to create a project because you can't just run in kind of I'll say null land. You can't run jobs or executions out of nowhere. So you have to have a home for all this, pl- all these places where you can view activity and, um, you know, what, what's, who's in that environment? What, what jobs are available in that environment? Yeah. Can I, can I read your little intro here? I really liked how you, how you put it. So, uh, run deck documentation. I'll tell you that right there came right from the documentation yeah yeah they're they're really good so so i'm not going to feel bad if stealing your thunder because it's not even your thunder to begin with all right there we go so here we are uh, a project and stop me if you want to to kind of elaborate but yeah a project is a place to separate management activity all run deck activities occur within the context of a project multiple projects can be maintained on the same run deck server Projects are independent from one another, so you can use them to organize unrelated systems within a single Rundeck installation. This can be useful for managing different teams, infrastructures, environments, or applications. Everything falls under a project. I I think I'd mentioned that. But essentially with these, you're able to provide customization per team, you know. So you have an enterprise at this. You could have a small team or a mid-sized team. And you just need people to be able to do separate functions based on their job, you know, based on what they do. And you're not going to provide, you're not going to want to provide everybody with access to everything. So what you're going to do is break it out based on projects, you know. And I think you had mentioned it before uh, at your job. It's kind of like a self-service console. You know, I need to reset a password on a server. I need to reset a password on this account. Well, Rundeck can kind of provide that ability where you just log in. It's like, okay, well, you know, I'm not a part of the admin the admin group or whatever. So I'm not going to be able to add my keys to every server per se, but I can go in and I can reset my password or, Hey, hey, you know, I need to do this on these sets of servers. So I don't know if I'd split it up logically per application team. I don't know if you've seen that before on any instances where each team kind of gets their own project. It It's very, it can be architected a lot of ways is what I'll say. There there's a lot of options when it comes to projects. You can split them up, you know, based on team. You can split them up based on 
I don't want to say access level, but you can get it's it's very similar to, to Camboard where it's it's very open. It'll allow you to do whatever you want to do, uh, and it can get really complex or it can be really simple. Yeah, just depends on how you want to do it. And then speaking there, I love it. I think you, you look at Run Deck and it does one thing and it does one thing pretty well, right? It it I look at it and I go, wow, this is really simple. I say to myself, this is a simple application. At the end of the day, it really just runs. It sounds dumb, but it really just runs program. It, it runs scripts. It runs programs. It runs jobs. And if you look at it, that's what it does, and it does it well. So uh, within projects, you're able to create. I'm, I'm just going to go kind of walk through here creating a project uh, and some of the other functions um, like get configuration, which I thought was really cool, archiving a project, you know, deleting a project and re-uploading a project if you needed to restore one. But basically getting started with creating a project, you're going to need a name, obviously. Uh, and then you can add label, description, and then you kind of get into the... So obviously those are kind of defaults. You you kind of expect to see those. What Rundeck provides is more granular control which i thought was awesome i didn't realize this when starting when starting run deck and you know running an instance the granularity that's available when you configure it so basically it has a couple tabs here uh execution cl history cleaning execution mode user interface default node executor and f default file copier so i'm just going to briefly walk through these um stop me if you've got anything you want to add or anything you know, you find interesting or you, I, I know you've set up a couple uh projects before, but you know, it's always good to add in, add in your own hot take basically. Uh, so execution, clean history. I didn't know if we use this. Yes. Yeah. So this is what we were talking about. Yeah. This is what we were talking about earlier. And, and the really cool thing about this, because when I went to set it up, I was looking through, all right, let me set because the, here they have the days, the minimum executions to keep, the maximum size. And I'm like, all right, well now I just gotta estimate and how much do I want right. to keep? Or, but it comes with uh, all the defaults set, uh, including the schedule to clean the the, the history, like the the, the job. every day at yeah, midnight there, yeah, yeah, every day at, at at midnight. And so all I had to do was click the enable and I had sane defaults to work with. So I thought that was really nice. I didn't have to go in there and take an tweak it, educated yeah. guess that, you know, uh, what do I, what I want to keep, you know, every, everything's just kind of defaulted for me. 60 days, um, minimum executions, maximum 50, size yep. of deletions. I'm like, all right, cool. I don't have to worry about that. Let me just run with those. Yeah. And I didn't realize it, that this was even available. I thought, so when you said a uh, couple episodes back, I thought you were going in and clean, actually cleaning out run deck logs and run deck information. So I thought you were actually going in and you had a custom job to go wipe, wipe data. And I had that in my mind. I was like, Oh wow. He's going in there. You probably got the, uh, you can set the default file settings. Uh, I forget where, but you can set where the project stores on your local computer. And I thought you were quite literally going into that, uh, folder searching for the executions I don't know if it was a date. I don't know if it's stored as a data. I'm trying to think now if it's stored as a database or actual files and going in and wipe. Yeah. Wiping that. Not, I, re I honestly thought you were doing that. I really did. I didn't realize you just, uh, yeah, let me just enable this and keep the, keep the same defaults. So yeah, no, it's, it's baked right in, which made my job super easy. Yeah. And it's a sweet feature. I didn't realize it's out there. It saves, saves on storage. Absolutely going to save on storage. Uh, now it might bite you eventually uh, if you're looking for something way back, but in reality, you yeah you have archives, you have backups. You're gonna have something else after sixty days. Sixty, I mean maybe I, I think one quarter is realistically as far back as you're gonna want to go to see execution history. I I'm not gonna need that anytime. Go soon. back right. No. Um. Yeah. With that being said, awesome feature. Uh, the next one here is the execution mode. Uh, so you can, and I thought this one was kind of weird, honestly. I didn't toy around with it as much uh, in the job function, but you can enable and disable execution now. So with this being said, you're basically able to, I, the way I kind of understood this was delay jobs instead of kicking them off at the start immediately once they're created, it kind of holds on starting them enably. So it 
holds on starting them automatically. So I, I didn't know if you'd mess mess with this one, seen this one, touch this one. I, I assume both are configured for to be unchecked, meaning they just run once they're started. I mean, I can certainly see where this comes in handy, especially if you consider like having a maintenance mode or maintenance window kind of yeah. thing. You yeah. just want to say, hey, we're going to have downtime for no, an hour. I'm no going to pause jobs. all executions. We're, we're just going to do that. We're going to do our thing, and then I'm going to unpause all the executions and open the floodgates. Go for it. Run. Yeah. Run, yeah. run, deck, run. That no, should have I- been the title of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> run, run, deck, run. I'll save that, that for next episode. Okay, that, that, that I was going to say. I was gonna say. <laughs> uh, so that's out there. That's an interesting. That's an interesting one. I, you don't think about that one. The next one here is the user interface, uh, configuring it for a project. Now, I didn't see this. You can display a readme and a message of the day. I, I th- <laughs> if you ask me, I think it's a little bit fine. What do you? But what are you going to do with a README like on the front of a, a like a a I project page? So it's out there. It's available. I think <laughs> I, I, I I don't know on that one. Uh, I'm it's, sure you're able yeah. to programmatically set the message of the day though uh, via the API, which is actually their API is pretty extensible. Almost, it's like they built an API and then they built a front end for the API. So realistically kind of everything I've gone over with the UI settings has an end has an endpoint to configure. So you can send it as JSON. It little side tangent. It's their API. Their API is nice. That's what you're used to working with. I mean, you're you've been you've been making calls out to there. You, you're 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 deep into that. Yeah, uh, but the, you know there are UI settings out there. Uh, so you can when you open jobs up, you can look at all the jobs. You can look at none of the jobs. You can look at. I think it has. You can look at you know some. I, I'm trying to look here. The job expansion level is one of the options. You can collapse them or you can expand them. I, by default, I, now this is project default. Uh, they are collapsed, if I'm not mistaken. Or no, they're expanded. What am I, what am I talking about? It, so when we open up our run deck instance that we have, uh, by default, we have groups of jobs and all of those are expanded. So when you open up run deck yes. for us, everything is all the jobs that we have in that project are going to show up. And, and what you're talking about is the list of jobs. So like all, all, every, Correct. every single Correct. script that we have that we can run is kind of displayed it for show, us it, right. rather than because, and, and I don't know if we're going to go into this today, but you know, everything in the project, uh, in, in the jobs at least. And so I guess that that'll be when we go over jobs, we'll, jobs. we'll take a look yeah. at that, but you know, uh, everything is in a tree like structure. You can just, you have, you have different, uh, folders or directories or whatever you want to call them, uh, that can be expanded or closed or hidden or whatever. So just, just, yeah, we, we do have everything, um, uh, expanded so that we have that. And you can set the, the depth too. Now, where that would be handy is say you have, oh, let's say you have, development and operations right so you have two top level segments and then under development and operations you have all of the teams right and then under the teams you have all of their jobs well i would probably want to set the level of expansion to two right so i would want to see um all of the the devs and operations and then i would want to see all the teams one level so that way that way, everyone, when they log in, they see all the teams, and then they go to their team and expand only their team, and then that pulls up all of their jobs. Um, so something like this. Now, we are very small in that we really only have jobs for us, so it doesn't make sense right. for us to right. divvy it up like that. Um, but, but you can you can if you want to. So it, it's just little little tweaks like this that make it a, a nice project to work with because you can set these little things and you're like oh, okay yeah that'd be that'd be nice or at least it's nice to know that i can i can do this if i need to it's extensible right yeah you have it you have the, the options there you don't have to use it and that even goes into this next one the node executor i was really looking at this one because i found this one very interesting i didn't know how it kind of operated so the node executor settings deal with how commands are executed on remote nodes 
Uh, and then note, the one thing I found interesting is you can just run them local. And I think that's what we do. We end up doing for a lot of our scripts. Exactly. And then calling Ansible Playbook to run it on the remote host via host file. So I found that one very interesting that I think by default it leaves it as SSH. Um, but there are, I think, seven or eight options out here. SSH local, SSHJ, SSH, stub, scripts execution. There is an Ansible ad hoc mode, ad hoc node executor that I saw out there. Uh, well, what's really interesting is that Rundeck is meant to be used as an agentless. It's it's basically meant to be used as Ansible, where it is connecting yeah. to all the nodes over SSH and running the commands that we're executing, you know, that we're specifying here on the remote nodes. We don't use it like that. We just use it to run Ansible to run locally scripts. and then let yeah. Ansible do the thing. Do that. Um, now that brings up an interesting question is, you know, if we have an inventory of hosts that we manage, do we say, let's have Rundeck remote out to those hosts and run commands receivable locally on those hosts? Right. Like, so there's, there's options that we have with Rundeck in ways that we can use it. You can use it as this thing that kind of spiders out onto, you know, and manages all of the, the, the instances or servers or, um, or firewalls or, you know, the windows boxes or whatever it is out there that you need to talk to. Um, or do you just want to run scripts locally that do that remote, uh, that, that, that handle the networking for you? Um, so it's, it's, got plenty of different ways to to do its magic and i love it it's it's just what i need yeah and so going from the executor where are you going to run the files from is the next question right and i found this one interesting so this uses you know it's the same situation with the executor as you know copying files it's how do you want to get them there basically is what it asks you now obviously if you're running it local you're not going to have to worry about that because guess what what you want to what you want to run is just going to run locally. You're not going to have to worry about it. But this uses so the copying files uh, uses so I, I had to include it here. Uh, it's going to copy it over to C Windows Temp on Windows Systems and then just the slash temp folder on you know I want to say Lin I'll just say Linux based systems. Um, but another cool feature, honestly, and it, it pairs nicely with S. SSH there. Uh, I don't know if you're able to see it, but basically you can set uh, the SSH key right there. So that's the IDRSA that you're going to use. And then you're going to have the public key out on the other server there. And then it's just going to be able to copy files how you want. Now, I was also looking because I, I, I didn't know. I said to myself, well, what if I don't want to copy it to temp and, you know, or see Windows temp? Where can I copy it? And there is, it's not shown, but there is a way to set the uh, exact location where your files you're copying are going to go on the and remote server. That's something else that I found out about Rundeck as I've been kind of working with it is that if it's not in the UI, uh, there you may be able to set it in one of the configuration options totally. because there's a ton of things totally. behind the scenes back there that are also configurable that they just don't expose in the UI. And you're like, well, there's so much more here that I can deal with. And I, I'm not going to jump into any of them at all, but the plugins too. They're so yeah. extensible and they're, a, I, I want to say like there are million, and they're not millions of them, but they're, they're, they're out there. If you want, yeah. if you need some kind of plugin, it's probably out there. Someone probably had the same exact need for this and you're probably going to find it. And so. you can write new plugins in Python, Perl, I believe, and, and probably I would, I would assume a plethora of other languages, but I, I know for sure Python and that would be something that that should be uh, like I I've I know people who have written Rundeck written, plugins yeah yeah and they're like it's you know you just follow the template and it's incredibly it easy I'm like all right cool just package it up upload it to the Send server and off you go yeah yeah and it's funny you should say that it because I think the Git configuration was initially a plugin before it became default uh, I was trying to find the history of it. This one's awesome. This one's very cool. I 
if if there's something out there maybe for Q4 here, it's uh get configuration <laughs> with the projects because I didn't realize it, but you're able to import and export the project as a Git repository. So I, I'm I'm just gonna say it out here right now. I know we have everything in Run Deck out there. I know we have backups for it, but it would be nice to have like a change management for each of the jobs and the project as a whole itself. Just because you get to see, all right, what's you know, what is changing, what's going on within the project, and and not only that, but you would you would also be able to see. Or you, uh, you would also be able to manipulate if I want to change one thing across all of them. I don't have to go into them one at a time. I can do a real simple sed command and be done for the day. Push it and then just say, hey, you know, do an import via Git. Yeah. And then, uh, so I, I did go through kind of the process for export and import. Uh, I didn't do it on our instance, but it's pretty simple setup uh, essentially it needs I, I think it uses HTTPS um, or SSH I want to say I, I I'd have I know it was asking for authentication um, I believe by default it was trying SSH but I know that there may have been an HTTPS option for exporting it and importing it and you know you set the git repo essentially it says S set up SCM uh, but it's git so uh, I was thinking, I, I, for some reason, SCM yesterday and SVN, the other kind of software version, what software version software that's out there, where it was in my brain. So, uh, no, it does use Git, but a, a, another great feature, cool feature that's out there. And then, you know, maybe you don't want to use Git to export. I say export. It's I, you can use Git to track, is what I'll say, but. Really, there is another option for archiving a project, which I think would be the better way to go. Um, obviously, Git's going to allow you to provide you that granularity, and you're going to be able to view it all in text, which is actually pretty nice. But archiving it is going to give you that ability to download it, pull it down, and say, okay, um, you know, what's the project? What do I want to include in the project? Uh, you know, what's coming down with it? And you get the feature. Basically, you're pulling down everything in the project uh, is what it comes down to. You can even have the option to include webhook auth tokens, which I would hope they secure them, but assuming that is there, I bet they do not. So um, I, I don't have much to say about archiving a project. You know, if you need to pull it down, you can. If, if you need to, if you want to back it up without backing up the entire instance, it's available. And then, you know, right on the exact flip side is how do you want to load your project in? And I found this pretty interesting. You can basically regenerate UUIDs for jobs and you have a whole lot of settings around, you know, what you actually want to import from the project or if you want to just say, you know what, I'm not going to import this part of the project or I don't want to import this. Uh, so, you know, ACL policies I know are important. So say someone had like a template uh pr- project that they had out there to, you know, like, all right, I'm going to, I want to be able to add a user in uh, LDAP or whatever. And it's like, okay, I'm just going to import this project into my run deck instance. I want to be able to run it, but I don't want to use their ACL policies. I'm just going to use my own because I have, I'm configured the way I want them configured. So again, pretty granular with this, uh, with being able to export and import projects in the way you want. And then the uh, last setting here, or the last option is, brings a tear to my eye, if you would like to delete your project. If you if you want to end up deleting it, guess what? There's an option out there to do it. So, And and that's that's been used uh, a lot uh, on my end, definitely when I'm testing stuff out um, or, you know, figuring out, because I had to figure out all the project settings and stuff like that. Yeah. And I, I was like, I don't, I don't want to do something on our production project, you know, right. where, where everything's working. Right, right. Let me not experiment there. So in creating a new project, you know, as you went over, very easy to do, was able to set that up, test it out, um, migrate it over to a new one, and just simply get rid of the project when I was done. But yeah, all in all, if it's it's the place to start uh, if you're going to go with Rundeck. 
Um, so a lot more features and conversations to be had around nodes, jobs, activity, executions. So we're just getting started.